We'll close out the NFC South previews with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And, you know, any team that, that wins the Super Bowl and brings back 22 starters, I I don't even know how you do that. I just, I mean, you, it's you're never been done before. No, I, like I, it, it makes no sense. Like, obviously, if you're starting, you're going to be happy. And it, as long as the money's good, these are all guys that are not used to winning. This team went, you know, from way down to way up very quickly. Uh, their win total is at 11 and a half this year. Minus 165, juice to the over. And to the under is plus 135. To win the division, minus 250. I mean, that is absurd. To win the NFC, they are the favorites, plus 275. To make the playoffs, yes, minus 650. No. Minus 650 to make the playoffs. This is just an insane number. To not make the playoffs is plus 425. Uh, they are projected favorites in 15 of 17 games. One of those games is is a pick em. So, you know, we'll see. Projected strength of schedule is the fifth easiest, according to win totals. Which, I thought so as well when I went through the schedule. I was just like, it It doesn't get much easier than Yeah, this. when you look at the Saints schedule and then you look at this, it almost doesn't look fair. Like, well, but that's the difference between being number one in the division and number two in the division. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're, this year. you're correct that's because the, the Saints, work. Saints did win the division last season, and then they lost a bunch of dudes. So that is the way it goes. Uh, you got two straight win total over – or two straight overs – uh, under Arians, excuse me. No Tom Brady team has ever gone under their win total since 2009. It's pretty impressive. Uh, pretty like impressive. I said, all 22 starters are back from a Super Bowl winning team. Schedule is easier thanks to adding NFC and AFC East teams. Uh, how different do we look at the Bucks if they had lost to the Saints in the playoffs? That was an interesting question. I started looking back at that, and they... So Jared Cook fumbled the ball inside of Tampa Bay territory with the Saints up by seven in the third quarter. You put the Saints up by 14 in the third quarter, all of a sudden maybe that's a little bit of a different game, right? But instead... I mean, it's going to be a different game, but at the end of the day, you're telling me Tom can't come back in a, in a whole quarter? I, no, I, no, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if the Saints don't... If it doesn't end up being a tie game after that, right? Because that immediately led to points for the Bucks. It you know... It, it just it turns things around. So how different would we look at this team if they had lost in the first round of the playoffs as opposed to, you know, when, when they did, or sorry, the second round, right? Um, I'm going to say something that I'm pretty sure is I'm not allowed to say anymore. Go ahead. It's something I've been saying since I was a child because I heard, like, inappropriate shit all my life. If my aunt had balls, she'd be my uncle. Okay. Well, yeah. That's if, a- ifs and buts don't mean Shit. Okay. If you're talking about nuts. you're talking yeah. about if they scored and there's still an entire quarter left to go and and they're only down 14 points. We just assume well, that's an L for Tom because he's never done this before. <laughs> I'm not just assuming, I'm just saying if they had found if they had ended up losing that game, how different do we look at this Bucks team? And I think it's well, vastly now, if different. They, if they but, lose, then yes. How do we look at the team? Uh, I think some of the free agents don't come back. I don't think everybody makes it back, but I still think this team is really, really good, and I think most of the people are back. Yes, I, I tend to agree. Tom Brady, ranked number 19 in EPA per drop back in weeks 1 through 9. He was number 1 from week 10 through the rest of the season. Yeah. I think you could... You could clearly draw a line this where he figured does out. does not give a shit about <laughs> well, football. That, but also where he figured out all of the Arians' offense, right? Like, it, it, Ooh, all, I, I still don't even know that, that it's that. I think, I think they adapted the offense by then to his way of doing things, and this wasn't necessarily the Arians' offense after that. And you might be right about that. You I might think be they were right. doing a lot more stuff that they used to do in New England. This team finished at number 32 in Football Outsiders' variance metric, which means... They were the most volatile and the most inconsistent team in the NFL last season. Luck metrics all favored the Bucks last season. Number one in adjusted games lost due to injury. They were number four in EPA gained from turnovers. They were number five in fumble recovery percentage last season. Do all of those stay the same? I don't know that those are metrics that you can basically count on every season. I agree with that. I so, agree. I all that said... All my doubting, all that good stuff, I'm still going over. I mean, there's well, a, the number again. 11 and a half. Okay. 
That's a big number still. It's, I, I got them winning. I got them winning fourteen, maybe thirteen. If you give them, you know, a loss here or there, I got them. I got them winning fourteen games. I do too. Fourteen to three is my number. Now I would say this: I'm being open. I'm being honest about this. I don't think they'll win fourteen games because early on, where I have them rolling off just a shit ton of wins, at some point in time, some mediocre team, not a bad team, but a mediocre team, is going to beat them because Tom Brady does not. Nobody cares about football as much as Tom. But if that game gets tight and they are putting pressure on him and his offensive line is missing assignments and he's starting to get hit, he's just going to go down. He understands, not that no one loves football more than him, not that he doesn't care, but he understands winning in in September, winning in October does not matter. It just doesn't. He has been around for 21 years now, going on his 22nd season. He, he fully knows that October and, November, and September aren't aren't going to matter in the pantheon of this thing. You start playing your best football in December, and you don't let up until you hoist Lombardi. That's okay. it. I, I have a, I have a question. Okay, they start off with Dallas. Yep. Then they've got Atlanta. Yep. Then you play at the Rams and at the Patriots. Yep. You start off four and. Does this team start to look at Six, eight, seventeen? 17 and 20 and 0? Yes, I don't I don't think there's any world where they they start off 4 and 0. I think there's a better chance that they start off 2 and 2 than 4 and 0. I but mean, they, they, remember, the rest of the schedule you've got, like them, you've got them 14 and 3 and I've got them 14 and 3. If they start off 2 and 2, which is what I actually have them starting off, I'm going to tell you, Gary, they they will not lose another game outside of Outside of you know a fluke loss, well, a after those first four weeks, they're going to lose. Like you get Miami at home, you get at Philly, Chicago, at the Saints, who we don't think is very good, at Washington, the Giants, at the Colts, at Atlanta, Buffalo. That's going to be tough. New Orleans at Carolina, at the Jets, and then Carolina again. I think the like, chances <laughs> of them losing. Now I know that I got on to you the other day about trying to pick the wins and the losses. I, I think the two most dangerous places on this schedule is is at Washington because I think Washington could be really, really yes. Good. Washington played them closer than any team in the playoffs. Yes. Isn't that crazy that 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 was a much closer game than the game against the against Saints Green or, Bay in or, this in, in Green Bay? Like in yeah. the in the Saints, isn't that insane? Um, at, well, I mean the the Green Bay game, like points wise, Green Bay was closer, but like it, the. The Bucks just kind of ran them out early, and then had to hang on against. Then, the, yeah, then it was just a hang. But game. but, but against, I'm just talking about they dominated the game. They didn't dominate Washington. Yes, Washington was right there till the bloody end, and and, and then the game against Buffalo, because I, I Buffalo think, is one of those teams where they've spent their entire life losing to Tom Brady. The game and, the game after going to New England, I think could be interesting against Miami, but I mean you got it at home, like even still I, I chalked up a W. So I, you know, I think they're it's a good. much better team than New England. But if any team beats them, it wouldn't surprise me if the Patriots beat them. Just because Bill is literally, I know that he is a every week, every week. I bet he's got five paid guys that that do nothing but just figure out ways to beat the the Bucks. I I tend to agree with that. I think that game means more to Belichick. Than any game, uh, than any he game that he's coached. ever coached, yeah, ever. I mean, more than more than game number nineteen in the Super Bowl. Yes, I think that game means more to him and his legacy than any other. I I tend to agree. I tend to agree. Oh, all right. So we I'll got, tell you this: I, I don't think Matt Jones will be starting that game. I think Bill will not let Tom go up against a rookie quarterback. Yeah, yeah. I, I might be. I might be wrong. Well, I, I will say this: if if you get through the first three games for the Patriots and Cam is not looking good, there's okay. There's a world, yeah. but man, I just don't think you want. I don't think you want Tom seeing a rookie across the, across the ways because that's going to give him. Not that he doesn't already have more confidence than any man alive, but I was about to say you don't think he'll have confidence looking across the way and seeing you know Cam Newton. But the difference is, is he has respect for Cam. That's true. Tom that's true. doesn't respect rookies at all. Yeah, no. 
He just you know? doesn't. I mean, look at every rookie receiver and running back he's ever had. He just doesn't trust them. He doesn't let them do anything. Like, he's just like, you're you're not touching my football. Like, he just doesn't have respect for them the way he does veterans. Yes. Cam is at least a veteran and has been an MVP in the league. And I think Tom has great respect for that. Yes, I, I tend to agree. I tend to agree. And that's that's not saying anything bad about uh, Tristan Wirfs, of course, the offensive line. Well, no, rookie, but that's but a different situation. It's different. Because no. that, that kid is is protecting him. So That's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> different. I'm talking about people who touch the football. Yes. And yes. the quarterback touches the football. You are not wrong about that. All right, so we're both going over on the Bucks we, very highly. Uh, so I'm I am definitely laying that. I mean, I know it's a minus 165. I, I still think that's free money. Like, I just... <laughs> I think it's easy. I, I kind of do too. So, all right. Is there anything else we need to hit on today? Uh, I just saw on Yahoo News Antonio Brown left joint practice after ripping Titans' DB helmet off and landing a punch to the face <laughs> or to the head. He oh, AB. He just cannot it's make just things a, easy, can he? No. Uh, apparently it was a, a testy practice all around. I'm seeing, but that's he. It, it can't make things easy on anybody. 